So last week, we had our 10 basic principles to YouTube success conference. And one of the things that we specifically talked about was YouTube Live. Now, when I first began taking a look at how to do a YouTube Live, I couldn't find any great step-by-step -step tutorials. So I decided to take a clip from last week's conference to share with you how to use YouTube Live so that you have that step-by-step -step tutorial. Now you can expect each Tuesday to learn about how to use a new tool to market your business or to use when you tutor. My name's Joanne Kaminsky, and if you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest tools out there, hit subscribe and that little bell. So the first thing that you can do is you're going to go to your creator studio I mark that over here and you're going to click it and to broadcast live on YouTube, you first have to find your dashboard. When you sign into your YouTube account, you're going to click on your YouTube's personal profile picture at the top right, click that creator studio button. And then you're going to see this um, on the left hand side is going to say live streaming and you can click the live streaming on that left sidebar menu. From there, if it's your first time, you're going to be given this welcome to YouTube live streaming with a simple get started screen. And this is where you're, you're going to associate a phone number with your channel and get a link to share when you start live streaming for your audience. So then you can put it out there to people who are following you say, hey, I'm going to be live on YouTube. So you can like put something in Twitter or Facebook or in an email message. Uh, you'll have a shareable link. That's going to typically be something like youtube.com slash C slash username slash live. Um, and you're going to use your YouTube's channel's username. After you enter your phone number, you're going to agree to their terms and conditions, of course, right? We always have to click that little box of using YouTube Live. And then you're going to be taken to your YouTube Live dashboard. And this is, your, this is my dashboard. So you want to get to know the dashboard and the different pieces to it. So prior to starting your first YouTube live event, you'll want to familiarize yourself with this, this, this little dashboard thing we got going on. Um, so the first thing is right on over um, here, you can actually drop down every single one of these. It says set up encoding software, add stream info, um, optional features, go live. You can drop down each of those. Um, and you can review the live streaming checklist and it's going to guide you through the setup of your very first YouTube live event. And this, like I said, it, it appears on the top right corner of your YouTube live dashboard. Uh, and unless you click the don't show these tips link again right here, if you click that, that won't show you it ever again. So don't click that if you want that to, to continue to be there. But to add stream info, it says enter an interesting title and description. Yeah, we got to fill that information out, don't we? And then you're going to put in, you can actually upload a thumbnail image before you do the call. How cool is that? I didn't even know that. I just learned it like yesterday. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I usually have been adding it in afterwards, but you could do it before. If you're live streaming a video game, it says include the game title to help new fans find you. Um, optional features, you can, um, it says you can use different features to enhance your streaming experience. I have no idea, you guys, what low latency and stream options means, but you, you could certainly do that. Um, enable monetization. I can't enable monetization because I don't have those 4,000 watch time hours. Um, and that says use the share buttons to post about your stream. So you can actually, there's little share buttons that you can use. You don't even have to go directly into those places to share. You can do that immediately from your YouTube um, dashboard. And then you go live. Well, you don't, YouTube now has an encoder on desktops. So you don't have to worry about like the um, setup encoding software. Your computer's already set up to be able to do it because they're now using Google Live. Uh, they're using Google Hangouts on there and computers were already set up to use Google Hangouts. So you're, you're gonna be good to go and you don't have to worry about that. Um, then there's a chat video. Uh, there's a chat. So what you can do, it says, Below the checklist, you're going to see the chat window pop up. It looks just like this. And this is where people can engage with you when you're live streaming. Now, you can even make this chat just pop out so it's nice and big. I like to have two computers. So I really like to have like the chat over here and then like my conversation happening over here. So when I'm doing like an interview with somebody, 
and I notice that people are, are commenting, I can bring that on into the live conversation. And it makes people feel like who are watching it, like they're really engaged in the entire thing. Now at the bottom, you can chat with your viewers and if you wanted, you could send emoticons. Um, if you click on the three dots, so there's three dots right here, one, two, three, on top of each other. If you click on that, it says that you can manage moderators, participants. This is where you can pop out that chat so the chat is nice and big for you. Toggle timestamps, I'm not sure why you would do that. And then if you wanted to send feedback, you could do that. You can also turn off the chat if you want to, which I have no idea why anybody would want to, but if you had like some morons like that just like plagued your live stream, you could just turn off the chat. Uh, I've never had that happen. Uh, apparently, I'm probably because I'm not big enough yet, but. <laughs> uh, but if you wanted to just unclick that box and unenable the live chat, you could do that. Remember that we want to add the event details in the information box. And so here's that information box. I was just kind of like playing with one last night and I was like, okay, so this is what the box would look like. Obviously I wouldn't leave it as Joanne Kaminsky's live stream, right? That's kind of boring. I would actually put an engaging title in that spot. And then I would in, in the box put an actual description. I would choose the category and then I would leave it as public because I absolutely want people to find my video. This is not going to be unlisted or private or any of that. And then um, after that, um, you can take a look at your analytics and you can look at your analytics live if you want to. So while your stream is going on, you can have that. Now, obviously, I I wasn't live live, right? So I just wanted to show you what the live stream would look like, um, but it would show you how many people are watching and how many messages uh, that you've been receiving. And then you can click here for full analytics, but you can watch this as, as it's going um, and, and take a look at it. Hey, Victoria, it's you, you're being featured here. <laughs> uh, this is the last, uh, this is the last, live video that I did with uh, with Victoria when she received her Trudepreneur Hero Award for being such an amazing uh, member of our community. But you can take a look at your analytics afterwards as well. So when you click on one of your live event videos, you're gonna see an analytics button. And beneath the video, uh, you'll see that. This is gonna take you to the analytics for your live event where you can see the engagement of viewers during the live uh, streaming session. And I thought it was interesting. I'm like, okay, did this person like have issues with their computer? Because it was like kept dropping down, go up, drop down, go up. Or did I have like new, new people coming on in, like someone would drop out and a new person would come in. Not sure, it doesn't really go into those kinds of details, but it's interesting to take a look at that. Um, you can also download, you guys, your video to share on other networks. So if you wanted to repurpose your YouTube live video, you absolutely can. All you have to do is go to your video manager. You're gonna click the drop down arrow next to the edit link. And then you're gonna see this button right here. It says download MP4 file for your video. How cool is that? That's awesome. Um, and then you can share, you can also share then your YouTube video on Facebook, right? So one of the things that uh, Facebook does not like is when you share like a link directly to YouTube because they like to keep people in Facebook. In fact, it'll even, when it opens up your video, it won't even like move them into YouTube because they are a closed portal. They keep everybody in Facebook. So when what they like is when you manually upload your videos into YouTube versus um, sharing a link from YouTube. So this could be really, really helpful for people if you wanted to, um, and remember you have to engage people with something. You have to tease them about the content, engage them in the content, make them want to click and watch your content in order to get them to continue to watch it. But the cool thing, when you like manually upload it to Facebook, you see the video moving. When you put a link there, it just shows your image. So it, it'll show like whatever um, your, whatever image you put in there, like your thumbnail, it'll show your thumbnail image and then give it just shows your description. But if you manually upload it into Facebook, then you have that moving picture talking head um, video, which people are more apt to watch in Facebook. 
So how do you do an interview using YouTube Live? Uh, it's, you set it up a little bit different when you're going to do that. You're going to go to events. I like to schedule my events out. So you're going to click events. And then there's this button over here. It says new live event. Then what you're going to do is you're going to schedule it. So you can set up the date and the time right on over here. And then you leave this box. Don't mess with this box right here. It says quick using Google Hangouts on air. Just leave that there. Don't touch anything else. <laughs> Because then you don't have to worry about any of the encoding. You don't have to worry about all that custom stuff. It's all taken care of because you're using Google Hangouts. And then if you, when you want to get started, you're going to see this picture with, you know, a checkbox. And you're just going to hit Start Hangout on Air. Now, there is, if you wanted to add people into your call, there's this button right here with a person in an ad. You can click on that and then you can send them a invitation to join you and they click it. So I usually will send this to people like five minutes before our call, just make sure everything's set up right and I can see them, they can see me, we can hear each other, all that great stuff. Um, no, no technical difficulties happening. And, um, sometimes there are and sometimes there aren't. Sometimes it goes super smooth. So you just click on that button, add them on in. I've tried, I have tried using um, the link button to send them a link ahead of time and they can't get in. So that's why I do the five minutes beforehand. So they have that, they have that link and they can come on in and join me live. They wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, and there's no way to do that at all through like the comment section, just like add somebody on into a call. It kind of has to be planned out ahead of time for you to do that.